Today I'm gonna show you 10 fire effects that you can use to make your beats more interesting. All of these are things that I use almost all the time, some more than others, but each can be used in specific situations to perfection. Cooked up a simple little beat that I'm gonna be using to show you these techniques. And here's a little preview of what it sounds like before any of the effects that we're gonna be adding today. The first effect I wanna talk about are filters. One thing I like to do is put a high pass filter on the master and automate it right before the drop. So yeah, do that, get a curve that kinda of looks like this. And sometimes I'll extend it all the way to the hook, but a lot of times I'll do it right here. So it kinda of gives you this like suck in, suck out, whoosh type of feeling. Another thing I like to do is add filters for intro or breakdown type parts. Now there are a lot of different ways you can do this. Today I was using this Infiltrator 2 plugin on this inverse sweep crunch preset. I automated it just for this intro part and here's the effect that we can kind of get with it. If you don't have Infiltrator, I would just take a couple different EQs and then automate them at the same time. So you could automate say like a band pass shape like this and then a high pass shape like this and just automating the different frequencies to give you a sort of movement, which we wanna do just to make things more interesting. Next is an oldie but a goodie and that's halftime. This thing's like 10 bucks and can do so many different things to affect the tone and the texture of your sound. Here's what it just sounds like stock on the melody. I like to mess with the time up here. Yeah. Another cool thing is to mess with this 1.5 mode. That a lot of times is if I don't necessarily love the melody and want to kind of flip it into something different. And then something else that a lot of people don't notice is this swell or sustain kind of knob. This plays a really big role in how it sounds. To the left is more of a quick kind of reverse type tone and to the right is more of a slow swelling type bob. This is really cool to put on melodies or for a little bridge part you can put it on the entire mix bus. Definitely something to mess with. The third effect are plugins like Vinyl and RC20. Vinyl is cool because it's completely free and there's so much you can do with it. Put it on this melody, set to 1930. Let's take this lo-fi off. These different dates up here, like 1930, 1980, 2000, kind of just give it a different EQ curve. Like on this 1930 setting, there's way less top end and bottom end. But if you go to 2000s, it's more of rounded off, kind of smooth sound. Some things I like to mess with are this dust. Sometimes I'll turn on this lo-fi button to give it a more of a digital kind of bit crush type sound, which I think is pretty cool. If you're trying to make glitchy type sounds, messing with this scratch button is also really cool. Let's turn it all the way up and see what it does. You can kind of tell it just really messes it up and gives it this glitchy tone. Another cool plugin that everyone knows about is RC20. A couple of my favorite presets are this Vinyl 2 preset. Something cool to mess with is just turning this wobble down a little bit and then adding it to stereo. Kind of widens it out a little bit and gives it a different kind of texture. If you have a vocal sample like this, a really good preset to use is this Magnitude Transition 2 preset. It really just helps it gel with the mix. The fourth effect are risers. Now, when I say riser, I don't just mean a sample type riser. One cool thing I like to do is add a delay plugin and then turn the feedback up and then automate this dry wet knob. Automate it kind of like this right before your hook and then make sure right when the hook hits, you take it to 0%. Otherwise it's gonna sound really weird. It kind of just like blurs the whole sound and it kind of like makes it in your face right before you drop it off. Another way to do that is with a reverb. Usually I'll take like a long tail type reverb. This is just the dry signal. This is the wet reverb signal. Got the dry wet at 100% and then we're just automating just the reverb sound. Got the automation right here. Once again, dropping off at the hook and here's what it sounds like. Another cool thing to do is use this plugin Infiltrator. Got this Comb Alone 3 preset and we're kind of just automating the mix knob again just a little bit. Listen to what it's doing. You hear that laser type thing? All these things together are just meant to add a sense of building and tension to the beat. Another cool thing to use right before your drop is the tape stop. I like to use this KHS tape stop plugin. There's also a tape stop plugin that a lot of people use that's free. I think it's blue tape stop. What you want to do is automate this play. And see, that's kind of a tape stop and a reverse tape stop effect. If you just wanted the tape stop effect, what you would do is you would just automate the bypass. You would just turn it on right where you want it and then turn it off for the drop and then turn the start time all the way down because you don't want it to start back up again. 
That's something that I find if you use tastefully can really enhance your track. The next effect is pitching up your melodies an octave up or an octave down. This is really useful to add interest to certain sections of your beat, like the verse or the pre-chorus. You take this little thing right here, pitch it up 12. This technique is really useful to help give your song a sense of progression and not let it get boring. Another thing you can do is automate effects on the mix bus. A couple things you can use are plugins like RC20 and then automating the magnitude with things like a filter and heavy distortion, maybe even a little bit of reverb. I found that this is good for pre or build type sections, really just to build up that tension and then automate it to zero in the hook. Let's see, let's automate, we got this magnitude all the way up. We wanna take it down to zero right when the hook hits. kind of see what I mean. Now, I don't do this in every beat, but I think it can kind of be cool in certain situations. Now, the last thing is chopping up your melodies or your beat manually to leave little pockets for either a melody or a vocal. And that's exactly what I did here. All this section is right here is just this section. And then I just chopped it up. A lot of times the two and the four beat right here are really good places to chop up. Here's what that sounds like. And this is cool because whatever happens in this little space in the two and four is able to really shine. Now, if you're enjoying this video and would like to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Other than that, you keep vibing. I'll catch you next time.